All right, everybody. Thank you for jumping on with us for our Tri-State Trends podcast. I got my man Shane Byrne, who I was just joking with that, you know, I didn't even know he lived in PA because every time I see him, we're in Florida and he's just not far from our office. So I think we're going to have a much more regular contact with you, Shane. But um, it's amazing to have you on. You guys are doing great things. Congratulations on your best month ever with um, Family First Life, senior sales manager, um, over 107 families. And uh, I appreciate you taking the time to jump on with me, man. How you doing, brother? For sure, man. I'm doing great. And uh, I just want to tell you, thanks for having me on. It's a privilege, you know, uh, to be able to speak to not only your entire group, but, you know, put me on a platform to speak to everybody nationally. So I appreciate it. No doubt. Well, I mean, we can only we can only c come and get you if you're putting it up. So we appreciate you. And, um, you know, I would love to, for the people that don't know you, if you could give them a little backdrop about, you and, and how you found Family First Life, that'd be awesome. Yeah, for sure, man. You know, so I've been doing this business now about 15 years. I've been in a bunch of different uh, environments. You know, I started out and I was four years with one group and doing a certain, uh, you know, doing the business in a certain way. Uh, once I realized that being captive wasn't the direction that I wanted to go um, in that organization, uh, you know, I was promoted pretty much into the regional vice president position with a company for about seven years, um, captive as well. Um, did very well, um, you know, always made over six figures, was having a great, um, you know, building organizations every day, every week. Um, but after about seven years, you know, I just decided that the market was changing, uh, you know, with the baby boomers and investments and IRAs and 401ks and annuities, things like that, that people are going to start to roll over. I just didn't want to be capped. So, um, you know, there was a lot of in this industry, there's a lot of goods, and sometimes you could be taken advantage of, especially if you have good talents and abilities. Um, I came into this business young. I was 24 when I got into the business. You know, it was a very simple move for me because I met a guy. He was 24. I was 24. I asked him how much he made that year, and he said 850000 I said, all right, I'm in. I don't know what we're doing or how it works, but, you know, <laughs> dude, you're the richest guy that I know, you know, not just – in insurance uh, in general, you know, so at this point, I don't even care what it is. I'm in, you know, right. we're selling whatever. So, um, you know, so I, that's how I got into the business. But, you know, I was a little bit, even though I, I felt like I was very intellectual and I was pretty keen and smart with a lot of street common sense um, in this business, I was being, you know, at a high level recruiting and building and producing. I was constantly on the run. So sometimes I missed some of the things. So it was easily to be taken advantage of. And unfortunately in the business, sometimes, other companies that don't have your best interest at heart, right, um, tend to take advantage of that. So it took me a little bit. At one point, I thought, you know, I was many years in. I've had other organizations and companies steal my renewals, do all these different things, teams, you name it. And I'm not going to get into the negative side of things, but I'm just using an example that it got me to a point where I was almost like, you know what, maybe I don't want to do this business. Mm. So I took a year off to kind of clear my head. And then I thought, you know what? I'm not going to be cynical about my journey. My journey prepared me for family first life. Nice. You get what I'm saying? Yes, like, sir. so for me, I thought everything that was happening to me was happening to me, but here it was happening for, for me, yeah. right? Everything that I did, I became better and better and I became sharper and sharper and I mm. became a hybrid. And what I realized was the reason why I was having so much success at each company or each agency. And, you know, I was, I was basically able to go into any company or any agency and then take wherever we're at and then turn up the temperature. Right. Once I learned it. And, and what I realized was it wasn't just me being skilled. It was the skills that I acquired on the way. I might get to yes. one place and they only do things in one way. Mm. But when I got there, I wasn't that much more special. I just did things a little bit this way and a little bit that way. And mm. I was a little bit more of a hybrid being. Oh, yeah. um, and I felt like that was my edge. And, um, you know, that's what made me different. That's so, huge. you know, for me, you know, how I got the family first life was this time around. I said, you know what? I don't want to be recruited. I want to, I want to recruit who I'm looking to marry the rest of my life. You right. know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. this is where I'm selecting that group. And so I did my research and I, I reached out to Mark Trollia. Um, you know, I had a long-term relationship with him all the way back to our practice company. And um, he was a guy that I trusted hands down that I knew that out of everybody else in the industry, I had to look at one thing and say, who have I trusted the longest in this business? Mm. You know what I mean? And I said, I'm going to call that person. So I just thought about it. And I said, okay, that's the guy. So I made that phone call and I'll be honest, family first life. You know, I started, what it was is, uh, you know, being in the business as long as I had been up until that point, 
Um, you know, I wasn't 100% committed yet mentally. I haven't had bought all in. I didn't think I needed to get to events. I didn't think I needed to do what I would call the rah-rah and be around, you know, the environment. Um, but what it was, it was about two, two Christmases ago at the Christmas party down in Jersey that really um, made my decision and, and that mental commitment. When I came down there, I was kind of a fly on the wall, and I just kind of took the whole environment in. And when I sat there and hearing you speak, you know, on stage and all the different people that was in there being around that winning environment, I knew I was in the right arena. Um, one thing that somebody said something to me was, um, they said one most important thing that I've ever heard. And he said, you know what, you're the right person. He said, the problem is where you're at. You're never going to be reaching your full potential. Hmm. He said, you're the right player in the wrong arena. And until you make a decision to put yourself in the right league, you're never going to have coaches around you that know how to coach you. Wow. And I was like, man, that's powerful. That you is, know? That's very and, powerful. Um, it was huge for me because at first I thought, man, I was pretty arrogant to say to somebody, you know what I mean? <laughs> he was like, you know, he's like, don't take this disrespectfully or the wrong way. He was like, but honestly, the numbers you're doing over there are great. He's like, but here I wouldn't even know your name. Wow. And I was like, wow. That's and true. I didn't understand that. Right. So I said, I got to see what they mean by this. So I came down and I was at that party, man, in Christmas. And it was a great turnout. Everything was put out well. And being around that environment, I was like, you know what? This is the environment of winners I want to be around. And I thought about it, like, even if you look at basketball, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, right? They didn't want to just be on any team. They wanted to be on a team with the right mentality, with the right type of winning mindset, with the right type of drive and hustle that everybody was on that page. And um, mm. that's what I found when I, when I went down there. And on the way home, I texted Mark on the way back and I said, I'm in. Wow. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I know. I said, no, I got it. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> and uh, that was my moment. And I didn't think I would need a moment like that at that point of the game for me. And on my way home, that's all. I didn't listen to music. I just thought about it all the way home. And then when I got back, it turned something on because it took me a year to make that decision. I signed up a year prior, but wasn't ready to get started. So mm. I didn't do anything for a year. And then finally, you know, it's a, you know, it's a week, you know, before Christmas, I come back, I make that decision, and that's where that mental change started for me. And that's how I joined with Family First Life, because this time I really joined. I thought I joined before. Right. This time I was actually in. That's significant. You know, so that's kind of where I started. Pretty awesome. And now we're moving into you, the producer, you, the agency builder, you, the mentor of agents. You know, how did that start to morph itself um, on the journey? Yeah. So, I mean, going back, let's start right back there in December. Right. So, you know, I come home and it was different this time before I was just already running full speed. I already had a team, already had leadership. I was already in the middle of producing. Everything was already rolling. So it was just taking one Jersey off and putting another Jersey on, mm -hmm. you know, just, I know how to catch a football, just throw it to me, you know, it's just a different color Jersey. But when you're starting back over, this was 2009 again for me, this was 24 year old again, because it's like, you're starting back over with nothing. You don't have a team. You don't have leadership. You know what I mean? And you're entering into a whole new world. And it was like, all right, well, you know what? This time I'm going to start right back how I would have started then. Because I tried to skip the process before and I realized it didn't work like that. Mm. So I thought I could just start right back here at the top and then build like I built before. But I'm like, wait, I can't build the same factory. I don't even have the mm. same mm. operationals. You know, I, I don't have mm. nothing that's in place. So you know what? I was like, all right, I'm going to start. How would I start when I was 24 years old and I just got my insurance license and I don't have any money? I said, all right, I'm going to start with what I have. So I took the third floor of my house, turned it into an office. It was an old two bedroom apartment anyway, set it up, put a conference table in there, put a coffee maker in the corner, had a refrigerator, started bringing in my agents from before. We started setting people up in different rooms. That was the office, right? Mm. And then we kind of started from there and just had that beginning mindset right from the beginning because there was something about that grit in the beginning that makes you buy in, not just the family first life, but to the mission. Like, what are we really doing here? You know, and that starting level, I think that most people try to skip that process, but I think the process is what really builds you. And I went back to that starting point and we just went from there, two weeks in there. Then I was like, you know what? Let me take this old house I got. We're going to take the whole house and turn it into an office. Love it. So we went over there, started painting the walls, wow. putting desks in. First floor was <laughs> for, look, first floor was uh, booking appointments. Second floor was recruiting. And um, you know what I'm saying? So it 
was like an old trap house and we took an old trap house and turned it into a, you know, turned it into a full blown office. Right. And um, people thought that was crazy. And I said, look, we're going to do this for three months. And after three months, we're going to open an office. And we opened our first office, 1500 square feet, um, did the grand opening, you know, did all that. And then within three months outgrew that office and moved into the one that we're in that you see here, which is about 3000 square feet, wow. two conference rooms, a podcast room, um, and about 12 offices. So, you know, that's kind of where that journey started, but it had to start with my mind. I had to make that decision. And then, you know, I did that and I started really rapidly growing. We started bringing in, you know, maybe 30, 40 agents a month. And then I realized, wait a minute, I've started to skip the process again. Because remember, at this point, I wasn't out there writing yet because I was so busy doing everything else. And Mark came to me uh, one day and he said, listen, man, you need to get back in the field. And I was like, yeah, I guess I maybe I do. And it was that moment. Now, fast forward, going through all that, going to conventions, right? Mm -hmm. Convention helped me huge. I never thought convention would make an impact on me because I've been to all these different right, things. Sure. I've been to the trips. I never thought that it was to be impactful, but I'll tell you the, the convention that I went to, the first convention, if I could give anybody advice that's either here or starting here. If getting to convention should be your number one thing, because see what it did for me was color in the page. I already thought I knew everything, but it's a feeling that I had to get. It wasn't just a contract. It wasn't just a mental. It was, I needed a feeling of who is family first life. And I got that when I went to the convention, you know? I got that. I felt this is my arena. This was what I was looking for. This is the hungry lions huh. that I need to be around. And, um, you know, that was that moment for me, you know, so I got there. So fast forward to, you know, where we got to now, um, you know, now coming into this December, it was like, all right, boom, got this, we got the infrastructure down, got the offices. And I got back in the field and I said, you know what? The one thing I haven't been is a producer here yet. I've been a producer before. Right. I've been, you know what I mean? A top producer before, but here's the problem. Every time I got on a phone call with somebody or did a conference call, I cut myself saying, well, you know what? Well, Mark, what I used to do, huh. right? Um, well, here's how I used to door knock, man. Listen, when I was out in the field, man, here's how I did it. Here's what I made this many <laughs> phone calls a day. And at the end of a couple of weeks, I was like, I got tired of hearing myself say, this is what I used to do. Here's how I used to do it. I felt like an old football player with a knee injury, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I couldn't stand hearing myself. And you know, when you catch yourself saying it, it sounds weak. I was like, you know what? It's, it's, it's Thanksgiving. I said, I need to get out there and I need to feel and experience exactly what it is. Again, like I'm a white belt with a yellow stripe. I can't skip it. I can't go right to black belt in this. I gotta, I gotta start with that white belt. I'm going to grab me some CRM leads and I'm going to produce through, uh, I, I was like, my number one goal was Thanksgiving to Christmas was my goal. So I went out there, I said, I'm going to work the same leads as everybody else. I'm not going to get anything special. So in December, you know, going in from Thanksgiving to, you know, into end of December into Christmas, my major goal was to go out there and help 35 families. You know, that was my number one goal. And I did that for a few reasons. Number one, obviously, I love helping families get out there, and do, you know, help as many people as possible, especially during Christmas. There was something up here, especially with the snow going out there and helping people. Love it. But one of the biggest things was I had to buy in again to another part of the business because you know what, if I didn't go out there and work every type of lead, run into every type of problem, I wasn't able to then send that out when I had a question with an agent or an agent said something about a lead type or this one and that. I had no way to say, well, that didn't happen with me. I worked the same thing you're working. It didn't happen with me. Right. So I was able to go out there and lead from the front, but I needed to get that buy in with myself. And I had to get back into that mentality. And I think that really then started that next spark of where we're now at today and then leading into, you know, going into convention. So that was huge to get out there. And so I, I think that anybody that hasn't done that yet and really doesn't believe in that leading from the front is important. This is what was the major turning point for me to get that spark. That's huge. Um, I love your, your journey because it's honest. You know, and it's like, okay, now, so because you kept going back to training camp and kept going back to class and kept, kept, you know, correcting your starting point, right? You've got to be in the best position you've ever been in now. Yes? Yes, absolutely. All the way around too, right? So earlier, like I was saying, you know, everything that I, that I went on the journey led me to be prepared 
when I got to Family First Life. Hmm. If I didn't go through that and I didn't go through some of the things that I went through, I would never be prepared to where I'm going. Because here before, I thought I was already at my pinnacle. I thought I was doing great at the level I was at, and I was. I was doing great at the level that I was in the level of players that I was with. I was doing great at that level, and I could have stayed at that level, right? But it's just like anything else. When I coach my son in sports, you're great all the way up until the end of your 12-year-old Little League. But when you step into that next level, you become going from being a somebody to a nobody again. It's like going from ninth grade to, to high school, right? You start at that next level. And what I realized in this business, it's the same thing. When you get to family first life, you get to that. You're now in the NFL. You got that ticket. You're in the big leagues now. So now that excites your game. But everything you did leading up to that, every practice that you did leading up to that, every gameplay and experience you had leading up to that gave you the ability to be able to now play. So now it's like, okay, now that's my starting point. I'm at the best position possible. Now it's time to now implement everything that I've learned over the years and now go 100% because now I have everything in place. I have the contracts I need. I got the right support and mentorship and I got the right backing with the company. That's dope, dude. I love it. Um, 2023, what's the outlook? What do you what do you see happening with your team and your production? How many families do you guys do you think you're going to hit? Yeah, one of the biggest things is I pretty much, you know, look at 2023 as going to be the first year to be able to get that, you know, going from 100 families, right? I would say every quarter I want to be able to double that. So by the end of the year, I want to be somewhere probably around 500 to 600 families by the end of 2023 yes. as a minimum yes. marker. Mm -hmm. I would love to shoot that goal a little bit higher, which I know we can obtain, but I want to be able to make sure that it's sustainable. I want to get the right leadership and in 2023, I think is going to be the biggest year for the growth because now everything we didn't have then, the systems that we didn't implement yet then, are now already in place. Man, you 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 uh, yeah, I can't wait for you to get the jersey. Um, you know, I think you have a lot of tools that are going to help you grow. I think you're very focused on helping people, um, and I think that your passion and your I think my man was right when he said, you, you know, you know what, you're a you're a great player in the wrong with the wrong coaches or, hey, the numbers you were doing over there were great, but I wouldn't even know who you are over here. Like, that's mm. some truth serum right there. But I'm glad you didn't like, you know, just get all bent out of shape about it because it's created what you're looking at right now. And I know that it's kind of probably taken a while you to open the your eyes completely to where the, what the opportunity is but after listening to you I can tell your eyes are wide open and that you are you're a hundred percent sure and and knowledgeable of the vehicle that you're in and how to utilize it and how to drive it so I'm excited for you Shane I think the I think the world's your oyster and um, I'm looking forward to to having some time with you in Jersey I think we need to schedule something that'd be dope for sure, man. I appreciate it. And, and, you know, the biggest thing for me, I think that most people that could take from this is, is don't be afraid to start over, yeah. especially if, if you're talented. You know, the, one of the biggest things that always held me back before was I didn't want to lose everything I've already gained. You know, people have a bigger fear of loss than they do a hope for gain. And I think that holds a lot of people back in other companies or other organizations. They're afraid to lose what they do have mm. to go get what they deserve to have. Right. And I think that if everybody could get rid of that fear and be like, you know what, I'm willing to lose everything. I didn't care. They could take my new, I can start over because you know what, where I'm going compared to where I was is completely light years ahead. So I can't wait to get down there myself and implement this year. Well, I appreciate you, buddy. Try stay trending with my man, Shane Burns. FFL, the chosen ones. Appreciate you, man. God bless. Thanks for listening.